ground control to major tones. What am I, not gonna win Major Tom played over the introduction of the International Space Station? No, I'm not not gonna do that. Changing aspect ratio to signify the passage of time? Well played, sir. Also, the opening curtain effect should serve as a subtle shift in your brain that you're entering fantasy land. All it takes is a little cooperation with the Chinese to get artificial gravity. Come on, NASA, get on it. And then it becomes starkly clear that this is a Luc Besson film. I mean, are these not the Mondashawans with the key stowing Lilu on their ship? Also, more importantly, each captain that greets a different alien species is a pretty well-known French director. So good on Besson for giving these guys a little limelight in an American film. And a meeting new alien races to live in harmony on a space station montage is the fastest way to get your replicant ruler to send you into space. Good luck. Well, if that's not just a great post-cold open opener to set up what's important about this film, visual effects and CGI that are almost completely indistinguishable from reality. Then we get into the second most amazing thing, world building. Everything is foreign, yet it still feels right and homey. The beauty and uniqueness of this location and its people go beyond just the vibrant, oversaturated colors and stunning depth. Each member of this new race has ballerina-like movements, what I guess are emotional rainbows in their faces, and super detailed Rick and Morty pupils. Malign A. Malign Alien flirting. Obviously the converters are wife wins, especially this poor tiny little scared dude. It's impressive how the performances from these actors for these characters we just met really hit home. A father-daughter relationship will always get you, even when they look the same age. Now, that's a Luc Besson shot, which actually makes it a Thierry Arbo, Arbo, Arbogast. High school French, don't fail me now. Who has been Luc's DP on almost every film he's directed, and I love it. Where's the band? <laughs> All right, so we're just about 20 minutes in, we learn a lot about our characters without a lot of sloppy exposition. Chemistry and Keanu voice aside. Valerian is in charge, he's a playboy, but he's hopelessly in love with Laureline. She doesn't believe he loves her, even though she may have feelings for him, and they've clearly had a physical relationship beyond their military partnership that has been going on for quite a while. Also, they're confident, somewhat fearless, if albeit a little apathetic towards their mission, and the general gravity of what's going on around them. Probably some science-y reason for the rocks and clouds sharing hues that someone smarter than me can make up. And go. Either way, liking the color motif happened in here. System activated. Welcome. The big market. This whole concept is right out of Hassan's crazy head and isn't from the comic. These are the types of original ideas we need more of. Converter in the box. Copy. Interdimensional teamwork. Corbin Dallas opened up a little bar. Squid alien in a top hat. Mommy? Da. <laughs> da is also a wife win. Hey. Awesome long take, which is even more impressive when you see how many layers it takes to create this shot. So while the little chase attack of the beast scene is thrilling and fun to watch, it also sets the stakes of the movie by killing every single soldier, but also bizarrely shows Laureline to be a tad cold-blooded. Shoot, he ruined my dress. Which I think is entirely deliberate. This is their world, no one else matters. A little sarcasm and dark humor never hurt anyone. Well, except these guys. They're dead, don't you dead. Also, yup. You're running nearly 20 minutes late. Yeah, well, time flies when you're having fun. Ha, <laughs> get it? Because he time travels? No, only my French audience gets it. And speaking of time travel, I like that they touched on it a little since Lee Hoy's essence, or soul or whatever, had to travel through space and time to get to Valerian. A little hint that the data has been altered, or the new data they acquired during the battle above the planet was never entered. I'm gonna ask for 10 days leave right now and I'm gonna take you to the most beautiful beach in the whole universe. A real beach this time. Define real. So like, almost to Saturn? But to be fair, it's a giant space station. A couple hundred miles per hour is still pretty fast. So it's like the Citadel, or DS9 without the Ferengi or Bajoran Cardassian conflict. Which also means no Nog, so that's a win. Stupid Nog. Another showcase of the awesomeness of this universe and the biggest reason it's so sad this movie bombed. I think we can all probably agree we'd all like to see more of this. No, that's enough excitement for one day. Ha, expositional lampshading. I remember learning about you guys at school. Huh, well you look at that. She learned about them in school. That must be how she knew to put them in a uranium chamber. Wow, I need to take you shopping with me. Which they do, constantly in the comic. So, comic reference. I love that there's just highly sophisticated robots with no real explanation or origin. 
They're just a part of this world, yet we get the feeling we should fear them. Dang it, I love the Pearl People. Even in a situation where they're attempting to retrieve something that is rightfully theirs from an enemy that destroyed their home planet, they use non-lethal weapons. Awesome weapons, did I not, did I say that? Shield bullet right into the gun? Planning ahead. And a sweet anti-gravity little grabber thingamajig. As oddly specific as this little spider helper seems to be, he could pretty much get you out of any immobilized scenario. Zip ties, handcuffs, rope, so he's a pretty versatile little buddy. Arguably the show offiest and coolest sequence in the movie, full of awesome imagery, and my wife just couldn't get over what kind of fruit that was and how she could get some. Also, temporary platform shooting gun? Give me that gun. Yes, I'm sure. Because it just went through when I'm falling in space. Cool-headedness. Alex, pick him up on 81. And I like that obviously Alex is clearly always one step ahead of the humans. A showcase of this world. Absolutely stunning. Multiple cities intertwined, all with their own architecture. Adaptability. I mean, I don't know how aerodynamically effective that ship shape would be. Although in space, that doesn't even matter. But either way, it's pretty adept at dodging bullets and looking sweet. Badass good girl. And all of our information is divided three ways. Kill one of us. And you kill the information. That's that's actually an ingenious defense mechanism. Yeah, diamonds are less valuable than that. The negotiation <laughs> is over. Negotiation skills. I've got a bad feeling about this idea of yours. No feelings were harmed in the making of this scene. Also, appreciate the nod to Star Wars, the series that borrowed concepts from Valerian right from the beginning. Only a fool would think it was the other way around. So we've talked about Bassan cinematography slash cinematographer, but this, this is a Luke Bassan character for sure. Just over the top camp with years of grime from a world we couldn't possibly understand. Not to mention he's another French director, but more well known as an actor. Nope, those things are nopier than blue whales. Way nopier. Uh, I'm Bob, by the way. Hi. You don't look like Bob, but you do have a beautiful beard and mustache win. Thanks. You, you need, need a detailed, detailed map? Opportunism. Phoenix down juice. I know, I know, how's that a win? It's an ex machina. But these little cheats are part of what make their universe fun and a wink at the audience. It's not like anyone actually expects a main character to die in this type of film. See, just the ancillary characters. My hero. You got the wrong guy. Yeah, he ain't no Roger Rabbit. Or Bob Hoskins, for that matter. I see, mon chéri. I, uh, I don't speak French. Language lampshading. You know, French comic. You guys are with me, right? Whatever it is you want. I got it. Ethan Hawke doesn't even care. Even a little. I'm going to complain about this scene's inclusion in the film and the conclusion, but come on, this crazy emperor helper lady might be the most fun character we get. I don't know, quick costume change wins? She's a, she's a good dancer? Well, I have a whole lot more in stock if you just tell me what you have in mind. I have a lot in mind. Never mind, I'll just see what's on your mind. And I'll get you an ID pass. You... I think you mean a multi-pass. You two keep an eye on old soldier boy, huh? He seems like a real freak to me. <laughs> Impersonation win. Cool. Imperial brain love shadowing. There she is. Wow, you're right. She's a 10. Compliments. One complaint I see come up quite a bit is that the whole reason Valerian needed Bubble was to sneak in and not cause a diplomatic incident. First, Alex the ship told him that, so he did his best to oblige. But Valerian never said he actually cared about causing an incident. Second, and more importantly to me, is that all the fighting and killing is happening on the inside. Whatever form of communication the Bulan Bathor use, it doesn't seem like anyone else speaks their language. So he avoided a confrontation out front where there would be witnesses who talk. Their culture reminds me of an uncivilized version of Klingons. So overthrowing the Emperor probably happens on a weekly basis. <laughs> Courage! And for those confused when Bubble was stabbed, it was definitely there. Huh, good signal that you're getting to the middle if this is the first ship to dock with the International Space Station and then they built out from there. This little space battle may go on a tad long, but it's fully entertaining and one more fun visualization of another alien race flying around in croissants. Sorry, it's French come. Croissants. Also, I've had like 10,000 people point out that the long take and Revenge of the Sith's opening scene is fully CG, so it's not impressive. And to that I say, uh, you're wrong. I realize it's not the same challenge presented with a physical cameraman and actor is not getting any cuts, but it's a whole slew of other challenges of coordination and continuity and the point is that it's still so much fun for the brain to watch. So I'm still gonna win it. We learned languages and mathematics, physics, Chemistry. STEM lessons. History is on the march, and neither you nor a bunch of savages are going to stand in his way. I don't want to make excuses for Jenna Clive, but it's not like he knew that firing those missiles would lead to the destruction of the planet. I get that it was a risk, but again, his soldiers were being decimated. But missing to an error on this scale would have exposed our government to colossal damages and compensation claims. Our economy would never recover. And then, yeah, he did a bad thing, but 
All right, this is making me feel a little icky. But seriously, he's not just a mustache twirler. He did some bad things for somewhat sensible and justifiable reasons. And I enjoy a three-dimensional baddie. We'd be honored to help you get it back. Here. Generosity to the homeless alien dudes. Melimana. It means thank you. Foreign language lessons. Aw, cute little converter saving the day. Little paw in the finger. Who is going to complain about a new beach holodeck? May you and your people live in peace wherever you may venture in space and time. Emphasis on the time. Time travelers. Next time, right? Right? Netflix? Hulu? HBO? A soldier will always choose death over humiliation. Annihilate them all. I mean, at least he's consistent. Sad, sad, sad that these Katrons were slaughtering everyone. But honestly, I was more nervous we'd never get to see these badass robots in action. Oh, it's happening. Valerian may be a sucky soldier at times, but now that he's turned on the Django John Wick Unchained, I'm starting to see what's so special about him. Got some no-look kills, and obviously a bunch of anti-stormtrooper aim. They must have entered exospace through the Batman sector. You guys left Catwoman behind. Alive and kicking. Good. Arrest him. Come up and s Is that a yes? It's a maybe. As unearned as this may be, there's a hinted history, and she does say maybe. So it's about as realistic an ending for these two as we could hope for. And I'm not being together. We feel like forever. Apparently, Cara Delevingne also sings, but not in Laureline's accent. Unbeknownst to most American comic lovers, Valerian and Laureline is a pretty popular French comic series, and this movie is mostly a direct adaptation of Ambassador of the Shadows with some alien and plot threads swapped. The biggest change being the ending. The comic ending is a little, let's say, subdued, so Bassan ramped up the action and really zeroed in on the evil human part of the story. Which, to be fair, is a similar thread from the comics, so while there's a little bash you on the head anti-human, anti-war stuff going on, it's just an amplification of the comic. Wow, I didn't realize how similar this would end up being to Ender's Game, but lots of similarities. Anyway, the biggest issue with this film, and I think the reason people may have left the theater a little empty, is the and-then narrative problem. I loved and rightfully praised the Bulan Bathor scene, but this entire sequence is an and-then part of the screenplay. Laureline, in the process of saving Valerian, is randomly captured, and then Valerian has to save her, and then Rihanna dies. It doesn't impact the rest of the story in any way, and it's sadly not the only offender. Honestly, my guess is that after watching the first cut of the film, they probably all agreed it was completely unnecessary, but had spent $15 million on it, so what are you supposed to do? If they had just connected the killing of the Emperor back in the end, even with some dumb ex machina where they attacked the Catrons. But again, I'm willing to cut the movie some slack because I think it's specifically what Bassan was going for. Serialized comic panels that are just meant to be fun. And this sequence is fun top to bottom. It's actually one of my favorites. Honestly, the thing I was most worried about was Rihanna, and I was pleasantly surprised. Her voiceover needs a little work, but when she's on screen, she totally impressed me. Again, tying her a little more into the overall plot could have gone a long way, but she does have an impact on Valerian, and I guess ultimately she sacrificed herself for them. Hmm. Another main complaint is the chemistry, or lack of, between Laureline and Valerian. It's not perfect, but again, I really see it as a callback to the one-dimensional 60s comic characters who just fill a role on the way to fun visuals and interesting concepts. He's a full-of-himself macho man who thinks he can just woo Laureline by flashing his baby blues. But he has to learn something about true love and trust to win her heart. And then Laureline is literally introduced by her butt, which I see as another nod to the era's exploitation. Not that Luc Besson is above using such things to sell his films, but she actually turns out more capable in many respects. At the same time, she plays the dumb blonde whenever it suits her. Can I help? I'm a good driver. <laughs> There's actually a lot going on, and it doesn't always help the overall tone. <laughs> The biggest complaint I take umbrage with is that the story was terrible and stupid and full of plot holes and you're a bad person if you liked it. The story's fine, it's it's fine. It's not a narrative masterpiece, it didn't break new ground, it's also not any less compelling than a lot of the stories we've gotten recently. No one walked out of Avatar saying, what a twist! The three scar face guy was the bad guy the whole time! You know, you know what I'm saying? Nothing against Avatar, I just, I guess this script didn't offend me the way it seemed to offend a lot of people. I gotta chuckle when I hop on Reddit to see what people are saying, because it's either people piling on the bandwagon claiming The Room and Birdemic were easier to watch, or they turned it off after 15 minutes. Which, ugh, I'm so tired of reading that. You can't have an opinion if you haven't seen the movie. The collective outrage always astounds me, as if Luc Besson went to people's houses and, like, broke all their dinner plates or something. Goodness. And, let's all be honest with ourselves for a second. While The Fifth Element is absolutely amazing and one of my favorite films, it's not some earth-shattering narrative. It's pretty... eh?
In fact, it's almost the same exact resolution. I won't spoil it just in case. But in 1997, we were all mesmerized by Vassan's amazing world building and all gained a new affinity for strategically placed ace bandages. Probably the most important part was that Bruce Willis carried the majority of that film. And when he wasn't there, Gary Oldman picked up the slack. And then Chris Tucker. And we all fell in love with Mila Jovovich as well. Point is, campy, goofy nonsense is a staple for Vassan. He just didn't have a few of the right things in place to make this one work for everyone. It worked for me, and I know it worked for a lot of you as well. A place it did break new ground was the intermixing of practical and visual effects and completely computer-generated images. Nothing ever looks like rubber or plastic. I guarantee there are fully rendered CG scenes that I didn't notice as such. And that's a great step in the right direction. Most movies have at least that one scene where, oh yep, that's a gummy Keanu. Speaking of Keanu, ugh, Dane, I, I don't know what happened. Maybe it's the language barrier with Luke, but no one on set said tone down the excellent adventure. I get it, and for the tone of this movie, it works at times. I really believe it does. I actually think that Valerian and Laureline are deliberately written unlikable for a large portion of this movie. They come off like out of touch trust fund babies. Luc Besson's irreverent sci-fi lends itself to camp and generally I love it. Dane just occasionally misses the mark. But that's my only issue with the performances. Even for Dane DeHaan. All his action scenes, most of his interactions with Kara are totally fine. And I give them both a boatload of credit for how believable their performances are. The majority of this film was shot on blue screen, which works so much better than other films that have tried. Really, this is a case of the movie maybe not living up to the sum of its parts. But the parts, the details are all amazing. Hover buses, split barrel guns, mind control helmets, platform shooting guns, replicator animals. Every little section that they venture into has something new and interesting, and I deeply want to see more of Alpha or even just more of the inside of Vassan's head. That's not looking great at this point, and it will always make me sad when I see how much love and effort was put into this project to have it just not come out exactly right. But what are you gonna do? They can't all be winners like next week's pick. Everybody likes this movie, right? Larian, 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 Larian,